Obviously, you all heard I made a decision uh, this morning to um, relieve uh, Dave Tippett and Jim Playfair of their jobs. Um, very difficult day, tough day. They're good men. Um, poured their heart and soul into the Edmonton Oilers for the last uh, two and a half years. Um, I had a tough night last night, sleepless night, and called uh, Mr. Cates this morning and told him that... Uh, Felt I needed to make a decision, um, and uh, obviously told Tip and Jim this morning, and I made a decision to uh, hire uh, Jay Woodcroft and Dave Manson to come in to um, and replace them, uh, Tip and uh, Jim. Um, you know, I've, I've got a relationship with with uh, Woody that goes back to 2005 when Mike Babcock hired him as a video coach for the Detroit Red Wings. Um, you know, he's worked under Mike Babcock, he's worked under Todd McClellan, has done a great job in Bakersfield here the last three, four years uh, as the head coach. So, and Dave Manson's done a wonderful job um, in developing the young defensemen down there um, together. So, um, a very difficult, tough day. Um, you know, I think that um, we were in here probably a couple weeks ago. And I felt that when we were on that stretch 2-11 and 2, there was a lot of circumstances why we were 2-11 and 2, you know, a lot of injuries and lots of things. And, and, uh, and we went on a 5-0 and 1 stretch heading into the break. Uh, we were healthy and, you know, with 38 games remaining, I just felt that I needed to uh, make a move because um, uh, we still control our own fate, but uh, we got to get cracking here and start winning some games. I'm open for questions. I can. So how do you think the team can play in in relation to things that maybe they, they haven't been doing? Like what's a, an actual step or tangible improvement that you think is capable of achieving here? Um, well, I'm, I mean, I think we have to, I think all teams have to play better, better defensively. I think, you know, I thought last night, we got. You know, I'm, not, I'm not making a decision on one game, but you know, I th we're down two nothing. I thought Mike Smith really kept us in the in the game, and then I thought we played a great second period. Um, you know, I can't. I, I just think it's a gut feel, and you know, I've been around the National Hockey League and around teams a long time, and I just felt that um, I needed to make a. You know, at the end of the day, I built the team. I take full responsibility where we're at. Um, you know, I'd, certainly Jim and Tip lost their job today, but it's there's there's you know there's a general manager and all the people that I hire, 
that are that are that have come to this today. So it's it's uh, like I said, it's a tough day. So I think it was a, it's a gut feel um, that I needed to make a change. What qualities do you see in Jay Woodcroft that make you think he can step right into the situation and and off and running? Well, I th you know he started out. In, in the National Hockey League as a video coach. So, you know, they watch tons and tons of video. So I think he's, you know, Keith Gretzky's down there every day um, with Bakersfield. Um, Jay is very detailed. Um, his teams play very detailed. Um, he brings a lot of passion and energy to the rink. Um, you know, I, I, I like the He's paid his dues. He was a video coach, and then he went with with Todd McClellan to San Jose. He went on the bench. He was an assistant coach. Then he obviously came here with Todd, and then he went down to uh, Bakersfield. And you know they won the Pacific Division Championship last year. They started out 0 and 5. It was a short and 40 game season, and looked like the team was a little bit on the rocks. And he got it together, and they uh, they won the Pacific Division Championship in a pandemic year. Um, this year, I think they were, I looked the other day, I haven't looked, I think they were sixth overall in winning percentage in the American Hockey League the other day. You know, we got a, a, a team of lots of young defensemen. Um, it was, they went to the final, you know, second round in what, 18, 19. So, you know, he's, he's been down there for four years. Again, I think he's detailed, energy, passion. He's been, been on a bench in the National Hockey League as an assistant coach. He's been in the room in all those meetings for since 2005. He's now ran his own bench for four years. Um, and I think he's had a lot of success. And then, then I, I watch Bakersfield a lot on the computer and get there occasionally live, but uh, I watched lots of their games, and he does a, um, I like the way the team plays down there. They're, they're, they're very detailed, and um, that's what I expected he was going to bring up here. Ken, there's been a lot of wild swings with the team this year, obviously starting 16-5 and five and then a six-game losing streak and a seven-game losing streak. How much of this reflects on the coach, Dave Tippett, and the leaders on this team? Are they both responsible for this? Well, I think I, I put me in that group, Jim. I think, you know, I built the team. Um, I think that obviously it's probably why we're here today, right? Um, the, the, wild, the wild swings, you want to play consistently, and then we probably... I think if I had the answer or, or anybody had the answer, we, we wouldn't be having those wild swings. I, I, I think there's things involved in that... Uh, you know, everybody's had injuries, but I think there was a stretch there when, when anything that could go wrong did go wrong. Um, but I think that um, that's obviously part of the reason why I made the, the move today. You mentioned a month ago, too, there had been too many coaches here. You wanted some stability. So what changed from January 11th till f February 10th? Um, you know, I would say that a little more sense of urgency. There's 30, you know, I, you know, it's 38 games. You know, probably when we talked last, there was what maybe 45 or 50 games to go. Um, I think it was in early January. I think and sometime. Um, you know, I think you know we've put out a healthy roster here recently, and certainly a, you know, the last couple of nights have been 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 tough. You know, I hope that we come out of the break, we'd hit the ground running. Um, you know, two losses again. It's 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 a it's a it's just a gut feel. I just it's the first time I've ever done this in my career. Um, I've usually I've always been able to get through the year, and you know I I haven't really. Scotty Bowman retired. Mike Babcock decided to leave, and uh, probably I let Dave Lewis go for Mike Babcock. But but first time in my career I've let a coach go in the midseason. It's basically I would say to you, it's a gut a gut feel. Thank you. Ken, I wonder your vision of the identity of this team. Like, if you were to describe the way this group should be playing at even strength to say this is the way this team is built and it should play, and has there been a lack of that this season that you think, uh, you know, a new voice might be able to pull out of it? Uh, the identity, I guess, you know, I go to the offseason, I would say to you, you know, we, we wanted to get more forecheck and we wanted to get more more to the blue paint. So, you know, we went out and signed Zach Hyman. 
I made the deal for um, for Fogel. Um, you know, there there were two guys that analytically were, were there were net drivers last year in the National Hockey League top five or top ten. Um, so you know, we're we're trying to get more more cycles, spend more time in the ozone. Um, certainly wanted to bring in more leadership um, into the locker room. Um, you know, got got a veteran Duncan Keith, a veteran Cody CC. So you know, how do I want to, how do we want to play? I think like all teams got to play. You want to you want to spend time in the ozone. You want to cycle. You want to be um, you want to you got to be able to move the puck from the back end up to the to the forwards. You need puck movers. Um, you know, you 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 want to you got to play hard on the offense. You got to play hard when you don't have the puck. And I don't we probably haven't done that enough consistently. Yeah, and, and feel free to disagree with me, Like It would seem that your team, night in, night out, is is not a difficult team to play against, that you become a team that's on the easier side to play against, uh, and the starts, consistently getting scored on first and not finding your game early enough. Uh, how big a factor do those characteristics play into a decision like this, and, and can you change that with a different head coach, or is that about the guys in the room figuring that part out? Um... You know, I think if you don't play hard, you don't be in the NHL. I, I think everybody plays hard. I, I think the NHL games are decided on moments. You know, like um, mistakes, um, and and then certainly there's there's the heaviness, and you want to wear teams down. Like I said to you, you know, you, we're trying. We're, we're trying to get heavier, you know. We're, but I don't know that you, you get heavier over a summertime. It's over. A, you got to build. You got to build. You got to draft. You got to. You make trades. You make moves. You got to. It, it. You know. Th th that was my experience in Detroit. Like we didn't. People think about the cups. Like there was about the six or seven or eight years before that. It was trial and error and bringing in people and and then people go out and making making changes, making moves and 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 players on your team getting into those situations and playing in playoff games and realizing that some of those players they can play harder. They got to play harder. They know they can play harder, and they do play harder. The, the NHL is a pool of 750 people, and it's not like there's a pool of players that you can bring into this pool that are gonna that are better than them. So a lot of it is is, is learning. It's 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 being in those situations. It's trial and error. So um, you know, I think I thought we thought you know my people thought in the off season we tried to change, you know, get a little deeper up front, get a little bit bigger. Um, you know, move the puck. Obviously, we we lost. Uh, you know, Larson left. We signed uh, Cody CC, someone to play play safe, safe play play steady. And um, you know, as Jim had said here, it's been it's been up and down like a toilet seat. Really, there's stretches where play we play pretty good, and then we we don't play good. And I feels to me, and you know, again, I don't know about a coaching change. You know, after December 1st, I think we beat Pittsburgh. I, th I think in the last 20 or 23 games, have we scored the first goal like three times? It feels, and then and now the one nothings have been coming to nothing. It sort of feels like you're chasing the game. You know, for we've been chasing the game for like two months. You know, so I, I, I don't, I can't tell you it's coaching. I obviously I'm here. I changed the coach. You know, and again, I, I I I built the team, so the team's not. If the team's not good enough, that's on me. That's. But certainly, as we're sitting here today, I felt that I needed to do something to see if we could get a different result and and a, and, a, and a better result. Um, now we watch. Hey Ken, uh, just a thought on, on Jay Woodcroft. Was he always part of kind of the secession plan here with Dave being in the last year of his contract, or is this something that you thought, okay, let's give him 40 games to see what he can do, and are you going to hire a new coach next year? Well, you know, I th my hope my hope was three months ago I was going to be signing Dave Tippett to an extension that we were going to make the playoffs and we were going to go on a playoff run and and. Uh, you know, Jay would develop into an NHL coach, and if you know, if if not here, an opportunity elsewhere. So, you know, I think that um, certainly having Jay in the organization um, for today 
has been a good thing, but I also think it's been, he's done, a, he and Dave Manson and the, and the staff down there have done a good job in developing, you know, young players into NHL players. Um, you know, Bouchard, Ethan Bear, McLeod, Skinner, Caleb Jones. I know there's, there's Yamamoto. Um, and there's more, you know, the young defensemen are playing good down there. So I don't know that in the NHL you can tuck. When, you, when you've got talented people, at, at some period, they either become a head coach for you or they leave and they go elsewhere. So the, 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 he, he's just, Jay was really, in my mind, in the process of developing into a player, a, a, a person that was going to be a candidate to coach an NHL team. Um, happens to be today's the day. So, you know, basically I told... Um, Jay, he's the head coach for the rest of the year. Um, and at the end of the year, we'll sit down and we'll see, we'll see what happens um, over here the last the last 38 games. Now, I know there's always two parts. This. You, you let one guy go and you have to bring in another guy. And was Mike Babcock ever a consideration of, you know, you guys are obviously are close. You've worked together before of, of him coming in here and, and trying to help you right to ship here. No. I mean, the two people, I'm going to tell you, the two people I considered was, did I stay in, you know, Glenn Gullickson, you know, it, is coached in the NHL um, for Dallas, and um, he's on our staff. You know, so in my mind, it was, you know, do I stay internally and stay with Gully, or you know, I got a young guy that's doing a tremendous job in uh, um, in Bakersfield. You know, I kind of I hired Jeff Blaschel in Detroit, did kind of the similar situation. You know, good success at the American League level and. What is he, the second or third or fourth longest tenured coach in the National Hockey League now, you know, on a, overseeing a rebuild that does a great that does a great job. So I just, you know, my my gut instincts are that um, that Jay's ready, that he has done a um, you know, he's been through a journey, you know, from Michigan State to, 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 to Detroit to San Jose to Edmonton to Bakersfield, that he's he's ready for to be behind the bench in the National Hockey League. And last one for me, I just, I know a lot of people were talking about your goaltending hasn't worked out as hope with Mike Smith getting hurt and, and Miko, he, you know, he plays well, but then he has, he struggles and then Stuart Skinner coming in here. Are you still considering or had you ever considered bringing someone else in and, and saying, well, let's, let's fix this goaltending issue that we have and kind of go from there? You know, um, Every, most teams have issues, and you you got to. I think when both guys are healthy, you know, two years. You know, I look at our goal. When both guys are healthy, we get good goaltending. Unfortunately, this year it's been you know Smitty was here for a couple of games and Smitty's out, and then we got to run out Miko. You know, we got to overplay Miko, and then. Um, you know, now Smitty comes back. Now Miko's got COVID and can't really take him to California because if we take him to California next week, he can't get back into Canada because of the quarantine period. So, you know, he's out for five games. So it's been, um, I, I just think it's, they just, uh, it was designed so that they would both play kind of 50-50. And then we haven't really had that the entire, the entire season. Thanks. So... I just I think that we've put undue strain on 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 on, on our on our goaltenders because of these circumstances. Thanks, Ken. Uh, Ken, you talked about doing some soul searching last night, not sleeping well. Uh, is there a point over these last two games where you kind of came to the realization that this is change has got to be made? Was there something specific in either of these last two games where you said, "Okay, things have got to change"? Well, it was probably. You know, we'd gone five. We'd come out of that two eleven and two. We went five zero and one. We went into the All Star break. Um, you know, everybody had a break, and you know, we've got three home games this week. You know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. I thought it was important that we kind of build on that five zero and one start. If we can get a, you know, win three home games or win a couple of home games this week, and kind of get ourselves jump-started because we're going to play 40 games at 81 nights. Probably, I guess, last night during the game, I just, you know, we'd lost against Vegas and and just uh, had a great second period and kind of hoping that we would we would um, make a rally in the third um, when we didn't. Um, like I said, probably 
as the third period wound down and as I went home and, and I um, was by myself and kind of thought, talked to a couple people last night, got up this morning, called Mr. Cates, and I just felt that uh, I, needed, I needed to make a change. And I ask this because of your track record of not firing coaches and just a month ago saying you didn't want to, but um, were you, was this decision yours solely or were you pushed in any way by, by ownership to make this? I mean, I'll, uh, my decision, my, I mean, obviously I talked to ownership, I talked, you know, Bob Nicholson's around a lot, but ultimately I have the final decision, so I made the final decision. And when you talk about, you know, this is the team you built and right now it's not good enough, how do you want to augment this team? What, what can you do at this point of the year to make this team a better team? I'm hoping today's can have an impact. Um, you know, I'm hoping that we can get Miko back next week and we can start to have Miko and Smitty, um, you know, share the net and kind of feed off of one another. Um, and I, I you know, I think we've got some people that can play better, you know, that haven't, that I think believe they can play better than what they've played. So I think the combination, and then if you start to win, you start to get some confidence and some swagger. I mean, we've lost our confidence. We've lost our swagger. Um, you know, not looking that we score the goal, the first goal every night, but you'd like to, you'd like to play with the lead a little bit more often. Can we, can we, can we score the first goal a little bit more often? I, I, I'm not. I'm not sure. So, you know, am I? You know, obviously, you know, when we went out, we signed um, Evander Kane last week, and Smitty came off of of um, uh, LTI. We've made some roster moves to pair, pair to pair money down. You know, we're in a cap world, so we're dollar in, dollar out. So we're not. It's not like we're going to just add players. If we want to add two million. We got to move two million, you know, and I think probably twenty to twenty-five teams in the league are in a similar, similar boat. So um, we'll see it. You know, it looks like you know Cass is probably going to Cassie. has got a fractured jaw. He's probably out four to eight weeks. Um, Duncan Keith, I was just in there talking to Duncan. He's in concussion protocol, but he's also got some upper body banging, so he's probably out two to four weeks, so, um, you know, we'll see, you know, it's going to be some, we're going to call Nima lining up, maybe call up another young defenseman, we're, we'll, we'll, we'll see, but uh, I guess I would say to you, the solution probably has to be in the room um, at this stage of the game. And lastly, for me, I just wonder if there's kind of like a threshold that you have uh, in terms of your evaluation of Jay Woodcroft for this season, you know, in terms of maybe bringing him back for next season. Is it, you know, we have to win a round, you have to get to the playoffs. Is there any kind of uh, kind of wins and losses perspective that you're, you're going to evaluate Jay on? Not today. Not today. I'll, I'll, I'll wait 38 games and plus playoffs, and then we'll see where I'm at. Ken, um... When, when you look at just style of how your team plays, you know, you've been giving up way too many chances off the rush. So how much of that is a coaching system? Did you talk to Jay? Like, are we, are we going to see changes maybe in, in how you attack in the neutral zone? And then conversely with Dave Manson, how you defend around the net? Um, you know, I, I, I've watched a lot of Bakersfield games, so I, I know how Bakersfield. This is the NHL. That's Baker. That's the American League. So it's yeah. They're similar, but they're they're, they're two different animals. Um, but but certainly when you have do things and have success, there's certain things that he believes in that that um, I think no matter what hockey you play, what level are going to be important. And they, he's you know he's attention to not. not Again, I'm not saying that, you know, sometimes you just need a different voice. You know, not, not saying that Dave Tippett didn't do attention to detail. You know, you're some, I think Reed asked me about what, 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 uh, what things does, um, does he do. Um, you know, so I think sometimes it's a different voice. Sometimes it's a change. Sometimes, you know, certainly, you I know, mean, I, I talked to three or four five of our players this morning talked to Connor, talked to Leon, I talked to Darnell, you know, shortly after I made the decision and I, I informed Tip and, 
and Jim Playfair, and I think we all, f I feel incredible responsibility today. Um, they're good people. They're, they're good hockey people. Um, and um, I don't like to press conferences in J July, uh, January letting, or February letting people go when there's half the season to go. So, you know, certainly um, part of the decision today is decisions that I've made. But um, we've got 38 games to try to make it right. And I just felt that I needed to make a change to try to get some different results. You talk about a different voice, and sometimes that can just be the difference for players. When you look at it and you feel like when guys like Drysdale McDavid have set such a high standard for the last few years, for them, their offensive production for months is well below what they've been used to for three and a half years. And you know, Darnell Nurse's defensive zone coverage probably below the standards that he's set the last few seasons. Is this arguably a good time for a new coach because there's a chance your best players will get back to the level they played at before? Yeah. <laughs> Great question. <laughs> but no, I mean, obviously, you know, Tip did that. Tip and Jim Playford did it. You know, like, they came here in, in year one and, and the 72-game season, and, you know, they'd taken a team that had been 28th overall to 12th overall. And unfortunately, the pandemic, you know, we got better in lots of areas. We got, in, in many areas, we got better. You know, special teams, I think the team was near the last. They'd taken the team to, what, second in the penalty kill that first year? Was it first and second? You know, and then and then backed it up last year with ninth and penalty kill. So Dave Tipp and Jim Playfair have done, they've done that. What you're talking about, they did that under their watch um, to help you know, you know, in my mind, basically, pandemic, we were, we were going to make the playoffs in 1920, and then last year in a 56-game Canadian division, we finished second, and, and, and we, we, we did that. They, they, we were second in pen, penalty killing two years ago, or ninth last year. This year, we're in the 20s. So, you know, sometimes you just, like you said, you just, I just, my instincts... It's not like I've done this a bunch of times. It's the first time I've ever done it, and I've been a manager for 25 years. So, you know, I just felt that I needed to make a change, that that we can play better. Um, the team, the previous two seasons, has played very, very well under Tip and Jim Playfair, Glenn Gullickson. Um, and... You know, we were 2-11-2. and two. I sat here and I said, I don't like make, co making coaching changes midseason, and I don't. And I believe that we were um, given a lot of adversity that, that our team was playing. Yeah, we given up the first goal, I think we got on through. And we were, we were battling. We were, we were losing lots of games in the last 10 minutes of the third period. And then we went in the 5-0-1 run, and we went into the break, and I kind of felt that we'd hit the ground running, that we'd maybe turn the corner and we were gonna, we were on the upswing. And when we lose the first two home games, um, coming out of the break, and you know, I thought we were loose last night, and and give give up a lot of a lot of scoring chances. And I just felt that, like I said, I went home last night, and probably in the third period, is the, the last ten minutes, or once they made it, they scored to make it three and four as the game was winding down. I just felt that leaving the rink, I spent a lot of time here, was talking to Tip, and I was just, you know, and Keith Gretzky was here, and Bill Scott, and coaches, and was here for an hour and a half, two hours after the game, and then I went home and just spent a lot of time by myself, and then I, I talked to Bob Nicholson late last night, and Daryl Cates this morning, and just decided to make this decision. One last one for me. You mentioned the amount of chance you gave up last night. The one area that pre-Tippet, during Tippet, that hasn't really improved on the team is five-on-five five goals against. And when you look at successful teams, if you can't lower that number, it's hard to win. So how much of that is on the players? How much of that is going to be on, on Manson and Woodcroft to try to solve? Because it's been an issue for a while. No, I mean, Jason, you're, 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 you're dead on. I mean, it's, you've got to keep the puck out of your net. And um, we, have to do, we have to work, we have to figure out a way to... Can't win 5-4. You know, we won lots of games. I think the, the first 16 and 5, I think what we were scoring five goals to win. So certainly you got to you got to keep me not sure where Bakersfield is in the goals against, but I watch them. I, their goals against is plummeting. They're, 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 they're playing good. They're, they're, so hopefully a different voice 
we're all saying the same message. Like the game's played the same way today. There, there's different terminology, but at the end of the day, you got to defend hard. You got to keep the puck out of your net. You got to be good defensively. You got to go to the blue paint. You got to score ugly goals. You got to have good special teams. And, and there'll be somebody here sitting here 20 years from now telling you there'll be different verbiage and different terms, but the game is played on the same 80 by 200, and it's, 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 it's hockey. So, you know, sometimes you just need to have a, sometimes there's just got to be a different voice, and, and, and certainly there's tweaks, and you got to do some little different things and some neutral zone coverage, and you're going to do some things differently, but, but certainly what you're saying is we got to keep the puck out of our net. I mean, it's, you know, and, and you're giving up, when you give up Three, four, five every night. It's 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 tough to to sustain any kind of um, any kind of winning. Uh, Ken, uh, you mentioned uh, talking to your leaders. Uh, I wonder if you can tell us a little bit of what their reaction uh, was like. If they were surprised, or sometimes players can feel something coming. What was your kind of assessment of it? Well, I'll, you know, I'm sure you'll talk to them tomorrow. <clears throat> Some of them will be in the next day or two. So I'll let them tell you what they were thinking, Gene. Um, I just wanted them to hear it from me, um, so they'll tell you their thoughts. And uh, as a follow-up, uh, you, you, you speak to some today, but it's a it's an off day. W would you, as a GM, sort of address the team tomorrow as a group, or is that something you'll? Yes. Yeah. You know, basically, uh, um, they're flying in tonight, um, uh, Dave and and uh, Jay, and um, I think either here or over there. Tonight at 9 or 9.30, you're going to get together with all the, the rest of the coaching staff. And then tomorrow morning, we'll come over. And obviously, uh, I'll just, it's game day. I mean, it's, we, 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 we get, we, you know, I, I'll just, I'll just, I'll talk for two, three minutes to the team. And then I'm sure, you know, and then Jay will go, go about his things. And then we got to go through our game day preparation. It's, it's a big two points tomorrow night. So, um, you know, if it was an off day, maybe I'd, I'd talk longer. But, you know, got to, got to, got to get focused on the Islanders. Dave, who's coaching Bakersfield now? I think Colin Chalk. It only Colin happened. hasn't been with the, the Collins left for personal reasons. I think he's going to. He's I'm not. I don't know. Yeah, he's flying back tomorrow. He's been, I think, in Ontario. Um, so um, Keith is flying. Keith was here the last few days, which you saw. He's flying down tonight. Was there any thought of sending one of your assistant coaches down to coach the farm team? Uh, no. Um, all these people, we need all these people here. We, we you know, the, the, uh, they all have a important role. So certainly, you know, that was one of the things when I when I talked to uh, Keith and you know, Mr. Cates and Bob Nicholson, and told him I was bringing up. You know, obviously those those two guys are really important in the success down there. And but you know, this is this is the most important team, the, the, the Oilers, and certainly Keith is going to, Keith does a good job, he'll f and try to find somebody to come in there and pitch in with Colin Chalk. Is there any thought to some of your veterans who've been here for a long time, They've, there's been so many different voices here as coaches, how many, like Ryan Nugent Hopkins, how many coaches can you have where, you know, it's another coach every couple of years, is there any thought to that, you know, for Connor, for Leon? Uh, is that a problem? Uh, I mean, a lot, lot of thought to that. I mean, that's that's why that's why I was there a month ago and said I don't want to. I didn't want to change coaches. That's why I, you know, when I at my introductory press conference, I, I believe in instability. But, um, you know, again, at the end of the, I can't just. It's, it's just a gut feel. I just I just felt that. Um, You've heard. I just felt that I need to make, need to make a change. But certainly, I understand. There's been multiple coaches for Ryan, but multiple coaches. I think what's this? Is this the eighth coach in 11 years, or 12 years? Too many. Yeah. So, you know, I, I think I think Jim. I, um, I think when you Keith Gretzky and you know, I think I'm going to jump around. You know, I think. Tyler Wright and his scouts, you know, we've, you know, um, Broberg, and we got a Petrov in the sixth round, and Sav Savoy in the fourth round, and, you know, Borgo and Holloway, and we, you, 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 we got to start drafting, you know, we've, as we sit here today, you know, if, 
if we go to the Stanley Cup Finals, we got our first and third round picks. If we don't go to the Stanley F Cup Finals, we got our first and second round picks. And you got to draft and you got to develop. And, and and then, you know, Bakersfield, Keith Gretzky, and those guys have done a good job down there in 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 in, in building a foundation. He, Keith signed really good veterans down there in 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 Malone and Cracknell and Griffith and and. Um, Marodi and, and Esposito and so there's good leadership down there and there's 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 young players down there and it's it, so when you all that's got to happen then you get your stability up here you know so we're working away on it but it doesn't it's, it doesn't happen in six months or 12 months so you know t today's a tough day today's a tough day for me, for a whole lot of reasons, you know, you're letting people go that have passion, that have worked hard, that, have been, that are good hockey people, that care, and we've had good success under them up until probably 20 games ago, until the 1st of December. Um, and we were, I was trying to build that, bring that stability. And, um, you know, and we've been talking about it behind the scenes on things that we'd like to do to make the the organization deeper better um and 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 uh, so today is about my instincts my experience um telling me that um there's 38 games to go we still control our own fate um there's big games ahead, like like tomorrow night, and then next week we've got what divisional games, three in a row against California teams, San Jose, LA, Anaheim. Um, that if I waited ten more games and we kept going, it might be too late. So I'm hoping and believing that um, by what I did today is going to have an impact, a positive impact, to get us to in the corner, but certainly what you're saying, I, I'm a big believer in, I mean, I was in Detroit for, what, 22 years as a manager. Would I have three coaches, four coaches, you know, like, you know, one, one, reti one retired. So I think that the good organ, the, the teams that are good year after year, they have that stability that you're talking about, and, and they have this, this the, 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 so that, that's certainly my what I what we're, we're what we're striving to do, and like I said to somebody here, I was I was hoping two months ago I was going to be working on a contract extension for Tip, you know, in the next couple of months, and and uh, so it's a it's a tough day, it's a disappointing day for Oilers fans. It, you know, when you have this press conference, it means your team's not playing good enough, it means your team's not playing up to expectations, and that's on me, and uh, it's a disappointing day. One last question about. Jay, and you had a gut feel, obviously, that Jeff Blaschel could coach in the NHL. He's your farm team coach. Yep. You have the same gut feel that Jake Woodcroft might be Jeff Blaschel. I do. I did, you know, he's got passion, um, got energy, paid his dues. He's been in a room with, with, with top hockey people, you know, top good coaches in the National Hockey League. Um, he's ran his own bench. Um, because he was a video, you know, start out in video, they're, they're watching every little thing and they got to bring things to the coaches. He watches details. So I think for all those reasons, I think he's an NHL coach. Ken, the last 35 minutes, I've been listening to someone who it sounds like has had trouble coming to this decision. And, and you've been in a life where you've done nothing but make these type of decisions. Why do you think this one... Is, is really sticking with you and, and that you're wrestling with it even in in the last 30 minutes it, it seems like you're still you know coming to grips I'm comfortable with the decision yeah I'm not that, why different tough day it's a tough day you know when you you know when I texted tip this morning at I don't know court eight you know 7 30 you know I'm at the office I'd like to I mean think when he gets the text he knows what the text, I think he knows what the text means. Um, you know, I, you build relationships, you know, like I didn't, I didn't really know Tip before we, before I hired him. Um, you know, he'd been around the league, say hello, but you know, you, when you work with somebody every day, you build relationships. So, you know, I believe that, uh, um, 
I guess I want it to come out that it's a tough day. It's a, it's a, it's a tough day um, for Oiler fans. We're not winning. We're not meeting expectations. Um, and, uh, you know, when I came here, I, 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 I you know, disappointing when you lose out in the, in, 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 you know, to Winnipeg in a sweep. But, you know, you want to believe your team's head in the right direction and you want to believe that you're growing the team and that, that you're, that you're, you know, you're, you're building and you're building building blocks. And, and I think that uh, for two years and 20 games, you know, we were doing that. And, and then the last 20 games, um, we, we haven't done that. So it's a, for me, it's a, it's a tough day for the fans. It's a tough day for for the people in there. When, you know, when you're in there, and I, you know, you're in there today, and then in comes, uh, you know, Tip comes, you know, met with Tip, and then I went into Jim Playfair's office, and, you know, I hadn't made the decision after the game last night, so it's, it's, a, it's had a bit of a, like, it's a funeral feeling, you know, like everybody's down, like they're massively down, and, you know, they've worked together closely for three years and then you know they're saying goodbyes and then they tips leaving and 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 you know they're cleaning out their office and and uh, it's t it's a tough day you know so um, am I comfortable decision yeah I'm comfortable decision did I make the decision yeah I made the final decision did I talk to people yeah did I did I if I've been thinking about it you know, when we were two eleven and two, it some point was here. I kept believing that that we were going to get it turned around, and we did. You know, we, we got it five zero and one, and we were starting to go. And then I looked at the schedule. It's forty games and eighty nights, and it's every second night, and it's three home games to start. Let's get off to a good start to start the uh, the last the second the second half. And then, like I said to you, last the last ten minutes of the third period last night, as I was sitting there talking, to I just came to the conclusion overnight this morning that that, that, that what I did. So you know, I don't take these decisions lightly. These are real people's lives. They're, these are people that care. You know, they're, 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 they're lifelong hockey people and they've, 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 they've helped um, for the previous two years. They've, we've, 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 I think we've accomplished some good things. We were making good progress. So today was a tough day. Good. Thanks.